Robert Beal Jr. This was okay. super interesting to me because by all accounts, he wasn't good in college. Five-star recruit, went to Georgia, was right. like their seventh best pass rusher, but he tested off the charts. And the Niners have this great D-line coach. And yeah. he decided, he handpicked him and said, no, he would, they're using him wrong at Georgia. I'm He's perfect for my system. Watch. To me, that is the essence of drafting at the end of round five. It's what you want to do. What do you, what yes. do you know about Robert Beal? Robert Bill played out of position at Georgia. He was a okay. five-star recruit, um, highly touted, and there were a lot of guys that wanted Robert. When Robert came to Georgia, he had a little bit of a switch up. At first, they were had him at outside linebacker. Then they had him with his hand in the dirt. They had him in two different techniques. They had him in a seven. Um, then they had him in a five, and they put him at the nine where in a package. And what okay. happens is when you get a school as talented as Georgia – a lot of those guys don't play long. They don't play I'm, when I'm talking about a, a game as, as far as a game is concerned. Right. So he got packaged up. Um, he was a part of a wide nine package. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so he didn't see a lot of right. playing time. But when he was on the field, he produced. He's very fast. He's got a burst. Um, he's got. He's got some work to do on on the NFL level with physicality. I just don't see him really putting putting defenders down with ease in the college level. And he did play the best ball in the land, in my opinion, which is SEC ball. Okay. Um, so he is going to have to put a little bit more weight on him. Uh, he's going to have to get a little bit more stronger. But as far as pedigree and DNA is concerned, uh, this is another, like, Arden Key uh, – Samson Ekubom pick like one of these guys who has the pedigree played out of position and is just trying to get to a spot where they're going to utilize him the right way I like the Robert Bill pick yeah and what I like about this is like it's really self-aware you know who you are you know you got this coach and you know that like certain players can flourish for you that don't for other guys and you can take this risk and like honestly I'm more intrigued with Robert Beal Jr. long term than Drake Jackson, just because I feel like he's got all these traits that that's, Chris. Cass yeah, that's kind of. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because that is something that I, don't you kind of feel like we did it in the inverse, where usually we wait for the big guy to get drafted and then yeah. fall off, right? And then we pick him up. This time, yep. I feel like, and there's a couple of guys that I'm gonna that I'm gonna mention down the line that are gonna bring this point yeah. on more. But this yeah. time I feel like we went out and got kids that actually came in as four-star, five-star recruits, really big fanfare. And they just kind of got lost in the wash of college yeah. football. And when they came out on the other end, the actual production may not have been there. But when you get them one-on-one, -on -one, you're like, well, I don't, I can give two shits about sacks in college. What can we do with them on, in, inside of our organization and i feel like we we did that with i feel like we did that with we're doing that with camera lot too i feel like we're doing that with robert bill and i feel like we also did that with uh looter yeah here's my thing with, with robert bill love the pick and i like the idea of taking a guy who may not have been successful in college may have been used wrong in the wrong whatever what whatever excuse mm -hmm. bring him to your team put him on a, in a good situation with a good coach and and have confidence that he's going to flourish. Why can't they do that at offensive tackle too? You know what I'm saying? Like you have your coach on the offensive line is just as good as Chris Kosrick, just as good. Look what he's done with guys you got in round four, uh, round two. Why is it? Wasn't there one guy in the draft with traits that you could one freaking guy that you could get to give to Chris Forrester, like the starting left tackle for the Eagles, Jordan Mailata. He was a seventh round pick. I mean, he's all traits, didn't even grow up playing the sport. There's right. no one you can give. Because, like, again, Robert Beale's not going to play right away. He's a project. He could be yeah. a red shirt. I mean, and I understand it. it's easier to do at the end of round five than at the uh, end of round three. There's a big difference in yeah. that. But still, like, nowhere in your 11 picks could you find. And I guess I get that there was there's someone as an undrafted free agent we need to talk about that we can't write off. But yeah. I guess that's my, my main quibble, man. You found Robert Beale good for you. Find the offensive tackle equivalent. You never have. You got you drafted but, Justin School. You drafted Mike McGlinchey. Like draft someone with some actual yeah. traits at offensive tackle for but, once. But 
also the pedigree in the context tracks. I mean, even though we're not trying to win the draft, we're still in a race, right? And the kid played on the national championship team. We're not the only people who know his background. And, you know, I, I do believe that he had multiple 30 visits. So you got to you got to play ball. You know, I, I be, even with uh, even with um, Cameron Latu, there was a run on tight ends earlier before. At, there at, were. I, I, I bet there if, were. You get, if you get John in them in the room and get him and ask him, I bet you they'll tell you, man. Yeah, maybe we got him where we got him was a little bit too rich for us. But yeah. Fuck it. He we we knew he was our guy, and we what were we gonna do? Watch him walk away. You know, we had to do it. When they traded up um for Brown, I thought they were trading up for a tight end. I was I was surprised. <laughs>